Hello there and welcome back to another edition of Japanese Sword. Today, if you own or work with swords, I'm going to introduce several tools that's going to make your life a bit easier. And we'll get back into it right after this. Right, welcome back. So, um, if you own or, or work with swords, as you know, there's lots of different things that you have to do with swords, you know. So, today I'm going to introduce several tools that will make your life a lot easier. So, let's get rid, let's clear the table first and then I'll come back and we'll introduce them one at a time. Right, first up, cleaning kit. So, everyone needs a cleaning kit, but, you know, these, these um, pre-packaged cleaning kits are not always what you need. You know, they usually come... Take this one. They usually come with uh, uchiko oil, uh, a small brass hammer, uh, a little plastic container with a with a uh, brushed cotton cloth in for applying oil, and hoshou gummy. Now, hoshou gummy you don't really need anymore. So rather than hoshou gummy, or rather than buying a, a cleaning kit, I would suggest buying all your parts individually. So that means um, buying lens cloths. Now, um, I recommend the, the Etsumi brand. The Etsumi uh, cloths are, are very good quality. They're very thick and they're very soft. Uh, uh, and I'll put links in the description where you can get them on Amazon, Japanese Amazon. So, okay, that's, so that's your cloth. Uh, the oil, you can buy that separately as well. You can get Ujiko at different places. Um, the brass hammer, yeah, it's, because it's brass, it's kind of hard and unforgiving, but they, you know, they're good. But rather than that, I would use a, a bamboo or, or a susudake, the, the, the uh, smoked bamboo, to make your own kuginuki. Uh, you know, and you can press, as you've seen in the, the cleaning video, you can press and push the peg out a little bit and then use, then use the end to push the rest of the peg out. So I recommend one of those instead. Um, cloths, lens cloths, you know, these can also double up as uh, fukusa. Now, you don't want to use a dirty cloth, you don't want to use an oily lens cloth or, or an, uh, a lens cloth full of uchiko. As your focus are because you're just putting the, the oil and the uchiko back on the blade when you while you're viewing it so you know the most important thing with all of these tools is that you keep them clean so i would i advise keeping your lens cloths in plastic bags like little ziplock ziplock bags you know and keeping them clean that way also while we're talking about cloths uh there's silk cloths called fukusa that are commonly used in japan you know but again because lens cloths are prevailing you know, more people tend to use uh, lens cloths, microfiber lens cloths, than they do the, these kind of silk fuksa. You know, so these are kind of getting outdated as well. They're very nice, and they usually have a, a logo of some kind on and things like this. Uh, you know, this one is actually for sword fittings, but you get plain ones for swords, usually. And failing that, tissues. But, you know, make sure that you use tissues that don't have any additives in them. They're plain tissues. Now this is the preferred brand in Japan. You'll, you'll see lots of sword uh, people using this kind of this brand of tissues, uh, Kashmir 220 Scotty. You know, um, so this is not a paid advertisement. This is my own uh, personal uh, recommendation that I use. So you know, and the good thing about tissues is, is that when you remove the oil, you know you can throw them away straight away. So you use them once and throw them away, and then everything stays clean all the time. Now I can't stress. You know, people go on about Uchiko and stuff, but really most of the problem is not keeping your, your tools and your cloths clean. You know, Hosho Gami, you know, you have to massage it first to make sure that you can use it to soften it up because it's quite hard when you first get it. So it has to be massaged. That makes complete mess and they get dirty very quickly. You know, so it's much easier to have a, a rewashable uh, lens cloth or a disposable tissue. So that's my, my recommendations for those. All right, so on to the next set. Right, next up is one of these hammer and wedge sets. Now these are what you use when the sword uh, won't come out the handle and things like this, won't come out the scar. But also sometimes the, the blade won't come out the, uh, the scabbard either, so they're good for using like that. Now per, they come in plain wood like this, it's just a little wedge shape like this, uh, you know, but again this is something you could make yourself with soft wood. And um, you know you could make one of those, they come in different sizes different, depending on the manufacturer. Uh, but you can get a small wooden mallet like this from most hardware stores and very cheap you know so that's those but i recommend they always come just just the wood when you do buy them but i recommend putting some soft chamois leather or something or even lens cloth 
on the inside side so that it doesn't scratch your scabbards and things like this and it gives it a little bit of cushion now what people tend to do is um, when, when they use it they tend to strike quite hard so let's take the pig out first Now what people tend to do, they tend to put it there, bare wood on bare wood, and then they go, pam, pam, and they, and they strike it very hard. But this is, you know, this can leave dents in the side of your, in the side of your scar there, you know, and you don't really want that because that might let air into the scabbard, you know, and, and kind of not render it useless, but make it less effective as, as, as a sealant keeping the, the atmosphere out. You know, so you just need to give it a little, little taps, something like that, not, not, you know, excessively hard, then you could do the rest with your hand and get it out this way like that get your fingers underneath the hard and pull it out like that now sometimes the sword gets stuck in the scabbard so this can also work for that you know so you just put the, the hold the little wedge on the side of the scabbard there give it a couple of taps and it might just pop out enough just for you to pull it out easily nice and easily now one more trick is if the sword is stuck in the scabbard you can hold it at the far end like you do when you take the scar off hold it at the far end over a table or something and strike your own hand and the sword might pop out the scabbard you can do it here as well that as well that sometimes works depending on, on how stuck it is so that's those they, there's different sword shops that sell these as a set you can get a little mallet and a little wedge or like i said just get a nice little mallet from your hardware store and make this part yourself and put a little bit of lever on or something like that right next right next up is sword cushions now sword cushions are very important because you need to keep the tip of your sword off of surfaces you know and it helps keep most of the blade off, off of the surface and also if you go to any any study groups or, or um like kante kai kante uh, groups you know all the swords will be probably be on, on some kind of cloth either on a table or on the floor and they'll be resting on a small cushion like this now they come in all different types you can get like patterned old kimono silk or, or you know new new these are probably satin or silk or something like that you know but it has to be soft again you know this one there's this one as well and um, for me this is a bit too soft now if you look at this one this is the same as this one it's quite firm you know so when you rest the sword on it less of the surface of the sword is actually touching the cushion you know whereas this one if we change them over this one's quite soft and the, and the blade sinks into the cushion so you know so it's better to have a little bit of firmness and uh, you know and again you could probably make these yourself actually let's take one of these apart and see what's inside and then you can think about making them yourself okay so this uh okay so let's take this apart and see what, what's happening inside so it's just a little bit of cotton at the end right so let's, let's take it apart let's take it right apart actually there's, so there's a seam down this side uh, so you know we want to remove the seam really okay so, so this is filled with just a, a kind of fairly firm type of cotton wool but really packed in there so that it makes it you know nice and firm okay so that's that so that, that's your cushions but they sell these on online as well i think you can get these ones these these tiny firm ones you can get these from noshu doll yeah. ei doll uh, site these ones they sell at various places i think they sell them at nezu maybe at nezu but osaka uh, history museum they sell these nice you know again a little bit soft but nice and long you know right next up measuring tools now um you can get these plastic they don't have to be digital these ones are digital but um plastic calipers for measuring the haba the moto haba and the saki haba of your blade and the kasane so you know so you don't want to use metal ones because you'll scratch the blade very easily but these plastic ones you know if you're careful and these are the type that they use at the um, licensing shinsa and things like that when they record all the details of the blade this is a professional tool 
used by uh, the Shinsa teams and uh, sword dealers uh, for measuring swords. Now this is soft wood. I suspect it is Honoki wood, the same as a Saya, a Shiro Saya are made out of. It has these, these lines here that indicate uh, one millimeter at a time for, for measuring the, the curvature. And along the top here is a measure. This one's actually in Shaku, uh, Shaku and Sun. Uh, but I've marked on the side, on the inside, centimeters. So I can convert it straight away. But, but you know, you can get another measure, another centimeter measure like this one and attach it somewhere so that you could have both or, or, the other, or you could have centimeters on top. So, you know, if you can't find one of these or anywhere or they don't sell them in places because they are quite rare, um, you know, you can just use a meter stick and, you know, measure your sword by putting it on the table where there's a soft cloth and measure the hamachi from the start of the ruler up until where the, the tip ends, you know, and then from there, just measure the distance between the two, uh, you know, at the deepest part of the curvature to find the soddy. Okay, so that's several tools today. I hope that's of help. Now you can find these tools online, um, you know, at different sword dealers shops and things like that. So you have, might have to search around. So you might not find these on Amazon, all these different tools and things, but you can find the basic ones, you know, mallets and, and calipers, plastic calipers and things like that. And tissues, you might be able to find the tissues on, on Amazon, Japanese Amazon, um, but the lens cloths as well, Etsumi lens cloths. I'll, I'll put some links in the description for, uh, for the things that I can find, the Japanese tissues, the Japanese lens cloths and things like that. But other than that, you'll have to try different sword dealers. Um, I hope this video helps that, that you can go and find these tools and it makes your, your sword life easier. Um, so I'm going to clean the sword now because I've been talking all over it. But before I go, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and most importantly, click that notifications button. All right, great. Thank you. See you next time. Hello there. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please click on the like button and then on the subscribe button, but also click on the notifications button to make sure that you get future videos in your feed. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.